Hi, my name is Barry Olney from InCircuit Design. This is a demonstration of the 2018 version of the ICD Stack Up Planner. First of all, you can see that there are nine default layer stack ups, starting with two layer, four, six, etc., up to 18 layers. Now, these are to get you a, give you a head start, and um, they're ideal stack ups that are commonly used. But of course, you can modify them or create new ones yourself. So let's create a new stack up from scratch. First of all, I'll open up a new tab. Then I need to insert a plane. Uh, every stack up has to have at least one plane for the field solver to work, of course. Then above that, we insert a core material, which is the dielectric material. And above that, we insert a signal. And dielectric materials generally alternate between core and prepreg. So we then need to insert a prepreg above the signal layer. Another signal layer above that and another core. So we're alternating between core and prepregs. And above that, another plane. So there we have a symmetrical dual strip line configuration. Now I'll add a microstrip configuration to that. So above the plane, I'll add a prepreg and then a signal layer and next a solder mask material. Ideally, uh, for digital design, we'd like a characteristic impedance of about 50 ohms, an edge couple differential impedance of about 100 ohms. So let's look at what we can do to fix this. So we'll look at, at heads up impedance plots. Now the impedance plots give you a good idea of how to adjust layers to get the correct impedance. So we're looking at layer one here, and you can see that the trace width is currently five mil, and we've got around 65 ohms. So if we want 50 ohms, we go over here and we look across here and we say 50 ohms, okay, we need about an eight mil trace. So I'll put an eight mil in there. And that gives us 51 ohms, which is close enough for virtual materials. And then we can say, okay, well, what sort of spacing do we need to get 100 ohms differential impedance? And here you can see we have the trace clearance and also dielectric thickness. But let's look at the blue trace clearance curve. And you can see that that levels off at about 16 mil. So this is the point where the two traces lose coupling. It's also the point where crosstalk begins for single ender traces. So if we want 100 ohms in this case, we need to look across here, 100 ohms levels off at about 16 mil. So we'll put in 16 mil. And then we have 99.38 ohms, close enough. Now, the other way to do this, of course, maybe you don't want eight mils of trace thickness um, for high density PCBs, uh, that is generally too high. So let's look at a five mil trace and we'll see what we can do to the dielectric to change that. So if we look at dielectric thickness here, we can see that, okay, if we want 50 ohms, again, we go over here and we go down and we see we need three mils thickness of dielectric. So if I change this to three, we get our 47 ohms. And again, we'll go back up here and we'll look at the decoupling and we'll look at the differential coupling. And as I mentioned before, it levels off at about 16. So we put in 16 mil here. So here we have 49 ohms and 96 ohms, which is roughly for virtual materials. That's, that's okay. We can also do this for the strip line layers. We have an impedance of 51.69 ohms, so we just need to adjust the trace clearance of the differential pair to give us 100 ohms. So let's look at the clearance. Now to get 100 ohms, again, we look for where it levels off, which is around 14 mils in this case. So I'll end up 14 mils. And there we have 100 ohms differential. Now, if we want to look at actual materials that the fabricator uses. So if we use the same stock that our preferred fabricator has, then we can increase the accuracy by about 5%. So let's look at our dielectric material library. In our dielectric material library, we have 31,275 different materials from all the top brands like Isola, Dusan, DuPont, uh, EMC, Hitachi, iTech, etc. So let's look at a Nelco material.
and we'll select the N4000-13SI, which is a high-speed material. And we're looking for a material that's around about 3 mils. So we'll insert that. So here you can see we've inserted the, the material from the library and it's given us 50 ohms and 98 ohms differential impedance, which is pretty good. So now we'll edit the solder mask and here I'll select a Teo material and again a 10 gigahertz material and we insert that. So we can keep going down here and insert the core materials, pre -preg, another core material here. So once we've done that, we've done the first half of our stack up. Now let's assume we want a 10 layer board. All we need to do is mirror stack up. Now what this does is automatically add a dielectric between layers 5 and 6, which is that prepreg material there, and it mirrors the complete stack up. And of course with this we can drag and drop layers and copy and paste them. So if I, for instance, highlight these area layers here, I can drag and drop them and place them down here or I can copy them into another stack up. So it's very versatile what you can do with it. And of course if you don't if you need more than 10 layers you can just simply mirror this again. And now you have 20 layers. If you need more again, mirror it again. And you now have 40 layers. You can have as many layers as you like to define. I'll just delete these because we're only looking at um, 10 layers in this case. Now I'll open up a stack up that I've previously done. Um, we'll just get a 10 layer DDR free design. And here you can see we have differential pairs defined. Now the unique thing about ICD software is that you can define a number of differential pairs per layer uh, on any given stack up. So generally you'll have 50 ohm single-ended impedance and 100 ohm differential impedance for typical digital design. If you're using DDR3 or 4, you want 40 ohms single-ended and 80 ohm differential. And USB has 90 ohm differential. So all these different impedances can be accommodated in the same stack up. And this is done by changing the trace width and clearance of each stack up. You can see here for the 40 80 ohms we've got 6 trace width and 12 mil clearance. For the 90 we have a 4 mil trace width and 6 clearance etc. So what I'll do is add another one here and we'll call this PCI Express and it's 85 ohm. So for 85 ohm differential impedance let's look at what we need. Call up the impedance plots again We'll look at differential coupling and the trace clearance needs to be for 85 ohms around about 5 mil. So we adjust this to 5 mil and we have 87 which is close enough in this case. These differential pair configurations once completed can be exported to Excel. Next I'll have a look at the via spans. You can see here we already have a plated through hole between layers 1 to 10 we have a buried via between layers 3 and 8. We have a blind via between layers 2 and 3. And we have another blind via between 1 and 2. Now what I'll do is I'll create another one between layers 1 and 3. And we'll mirror that. So what this does is exactly the same as mirroring the stack up. It adds a via to the top and also to the bottom save that and then we have our bias from 1 to 3 and also from 8 to 10. One of the really good features of the ICD stack up planner is the signal flight time and this allows you to match the delay of different signals which is ideal for DDR routing. So instead of matching trace lengths what we do is match the delay of each layer because delays are very different depending on the dielectric material of each layer. So what I'll do is first of all is I'll pull up the plot and I'll say that we, we want to match our delays to 3 inches. Now you can see here that our top and bottom traces being microstrip because the electromagnetic fields 
flow in a combination of dielectric, solder mask and air, they're a lot faster than the strip line layers which, is, which are totally embedded between the planes. So what we need to do here is to match the delay of each layer. So by clicking match delay, we've matched the delay. So you'll see here we have 525 picoseconds delay on each layer. And to achieve that, we need 3.66 inches on the top layer and the bottom layer, and three inches on the internal layers. If we look at this, I'll just change a few of these internal layers and, and put in a few odd dielectric values, and we'll see the difference here. So dielectrics can be quite different, and I'll demonstrate this now by pulling up the graph again. And again, we'll match it to three inches. And you can see that where I've adjusted the dielectric constants, it's quite different. So we have 430 picoseconds on the top layer, 411 picoseconds on the next layer, 464 on the fourth layer and 525 on the seventh layer. So we can again match the delay of these just by clicking match delay. And this gives us all the lengths that we need to route our traces to, to get exactly the right propagation delay on each layer. And what this means is that our clocks and our data and our dress and control command lines will all arrive at the receiver at the same time and will be clocked in. Another good feature that we recently added is the ICD termination planner. Now, what the termination planner does is extract the IV curves from the IBIS models and calculates the impedance based on the number of loads and the distributed system of the transmission line. What I'll do is I'll open up a DDR3 IBIS model and here we have a Z91B which is a Micron model and I'll select one of the packages and we'll look at DQ0 which is a data signal and we'll look at 40 ohm on die termination and 3.2 gigahertz. Now for our top layer of our PCB we have 51.67 ohms impedance we have a trace length let's make our trace length 3, three inches and we have a number of loads of one, but we can have up to six loads, which will change our impedance slightly because a load appears like a RC circuit, which rolls off the rising edge of the transmission line. So as you can see here with 51 ohms impedance, we need a 13.7 ohm termination resistor. I mentioned before that DDR3 and 4 should actually be routed at 40 ohm single-ended and 80 ohm differential impedance. So let's change this to 40. Changing it to 40, our series termination is 2.74. So in this case, our transmission line is almost perfectly matched to our driver, and so we don't need a termination resistor in this case. Next, I'll export this. So we set up our stack up, and we want to export a drawing to our fab shop. So I'm now exporting this to Excel. And you can see we have a complete fabrication drawing. And this is the layer stack up that we set up with all the Isola 370HR materials. Down here we have all the differential pairs, so target impedance 50 to 100 ohms, 40 to 80 ohms to DDR3, 90 ohms to USB, 85 ohms to PCI Express, and this gives you the layers and the requirements of trace width and clearance for each layer. We also have the via span definitions for the plated through hole, buried and blind vias. So you can send this straight to your fab shop and from this they can create the printed circuit board. Okay, so that was a quick demonstration of the ICD stack up planner. Thank you very much.